mother. Good morning, darling. I have a feeling you're trying to tell me something. Those were in you-know-who's briefcase. <laughs> so? But don't you care if he carries pictures of other women? Mother, in the advertising business, other women are merely tools of the trade. Oh, blind faith is unbecoming to you, Samantha. <laughs> Don't you understand? I trust Darren. You wouldn't turn a child loose in a candy store, would you? <laughs> Darren is not a child. Well, he's only human. Isn't that the excuse they always make for themselves? I'm only human. <laughs> They know their limitations better than we do. Well, I don't think of Darren as being merely human. I think of him as being a cut above the ordinary mortal man. How can a witch of mine be so naive? Mother, will you please go away? Very well, very well. I'm leaving. But remember, Samantha, no mortal pulls the wool over a witch's eyes while I'm around. <laughs> doing here? Thought I left them in a briefcase. Uh, you better eat your breakfast, you'll be late. Hmm. I've been looking at girls for weeks. Yes, I suppose that could get tiring after a while. You're not kidding. Which one do you like best? For what? For Miss Jasmine, the perfume account. Oh, yes, of course. Well, let's see now. This one has lovely eyes. And this one has a beautiful mouth. This one has a great figure. Gee, I don't know. Why don't you just cut out the best piece of each one and paste them together like I used to do? <laughs> With paper dolls. Oh. Look, I'm serious, Sam. The campaign starts tomorrow, and we still haven't picked out a Miss Jasmine. Now, incidentally, we're going to have to forget about having lunch together today. Oh. How about tomorrow? Well, all right as long as you promise to have lunch alone today and not enjoy it. I'll do better than that. I'll have lunch with Larry Tate and really be miserable. Better get going. You better get going. Okay. But remember, you threw me out. <laughs> well, what do you think? Marvelous. Incredible. Some of the most gorgeous creatures I ever laid eyes on. But uh, I still haven't seen that uh, je ne sais quoi, that ethereal quality we need in a Miss Jasmine. Courage, old friend. Don't lose faith. We'll find her. Oh, I know that. I was just thinking about going home to Louise tonight. I don't know. After a week of looking at these, it all seems rather pointless somehow. Come on now, Larry. You've got a lovely wife. I suppose so. Well, if you'll excuse me, Darren, I'm going out to try and wipe out the memory of all this. I never could stand too much of a good thing. <laughs> yeah? I hoped you'd say that. I beg your pardon? Aren't you looking for Miss Jasmine? I was. I mean, we are. Uh, uh, won't you sit down, Miss... Uh... Janine Fleur. Thank you. Have you done much modeling, Miss Fleur? I'm sure I could be everything you want. <laughs> In a Miss Jasmine, that is. You might. Yes, you just might. <laughs> Hello, Larry. Can you come in here for a minute? Good. Is 
something wrong? Wrong? No. You may solve a very big problem for me, Miss Fleur. Oh, Janine. Well? Wow. <laughs> well. <laughs> I'm thinking exactly what you're thinking, Larry. I won't say anything if you won't. <laughs> Very quiet tonight, sweetheart. You have a bad day at the office? Hmm? Oh, it wasn't a bad day. It wasn't a good day. As a matter of fact, it wasn't a bad day. Well, don't commit yourself. Anything new on Miss Jasmine? We found one. You did? Oh, that's marvelous. What'd she look like? Attractive. Attractive? You said you needed something gorgeous. Well, she's sort of gorgeous. She's blonde, I'll bet. No, not really. Oh. Well, what'd she look like? Tall, straight nose, experience. Well, that could be Abraham Lincoln. I said she was pretty. You said she was attractive. There's a difference. What's her name? Janine Fleur. Oh, sounds like perfume. Does she look like she sounds? You could say that. Well, I haven't seen her. What do you say? Yes. Yes what? She sounds like perfume. She looks like perfume. She even smells like perfume. You smelled her? No, of course not. Not deliberately. I mean, she's exactly what Larry and I have been looking for. Well, that's wonderful. Now, how'd you like to go to the movies, eat popcorn, and smooch? I would love to. But I've got to work on some exploitation ideas. He's very evasive. That shows interest. He is only interested in that woman because of business. You'd better make it your business. <laughs> Did you notice that he merely kissed you on your forehead? The next thing you know, he'll be patting your hand. <laughs> on Jasmine campaign. Janine Fleur, measurements 37, 23, 37. Wow. <laughs> Adjectives to be used in copy describing her. Provocative, dazzling, ethereal. <laughs> Personally supervised photographs for campaign. Get headshots featuring her large, soft, dark eyes. Get night shots at beach, moonlight. Janine holding perfume bottle in her long, slender fingers should be irresistible in a bikini. <laughs> What happened? You were having a nightmare. <laughs> Didn't seem like one. I say it was. I know a nightmare when I see one. Go back to sleep, dear. I'd like to change her position just a bit. Vegas. There, Janine, why don't you try your hand up here, just stroking the bear's nose? Uh, thank you. There you go. You keep moving her around, we'll be here all day. I think we've got it now. Hold it. Thank you. Is that lunch? Go ahead. Lunch, Janine. Oh, wonderful idea. I'm starving. Where shall we go? We? Oui. I'm afraid I can't. I'm meeting my wife. Oh. 
Well, I wouldn't ask you or interfere, except that it's... Well, never mind. Well, what is it? Well, it's probably foolish, but I think you'd better get another Miss Jasmine. Another Miss Jasmine? What for? Now, hold it. I think we better talk about this. But your lunch. I'll cancel it. Oh, please don't do that because of me. My wife will understand. She knows that at the moment, the most important thing in the world is jasmine perfume. Now, why don't you go and change, and I'll give her a call. All right, I'll hurry. Hello? Oh, hi, darling. I was just leaving. What? Oh, no, no, I understand. Yes, well, you go ahead. I'll see you tonight. <laughs> All dressed up and nowhere to go. I am going to have lunch with Darren. Really? One of these days when he's not too busy. Oh, I understand, dear. No, you don't. You think my husband broke a date with me because he's taking another woman to lunch. I haven't said a word. Well, it's business. Oh, yes, of course. Well, I was going to suggest that perhaps we could have lunch together. Oh, certainly. You know where Darren is, so you're going to take me there and bring me face to face with him to prove your point. I never suggested <laughs> Well, I'm not going to do it. Very well. But I'll tell you what I am going to do. What? I am going to take you there and bring you face to face with Darren to prove my point. <laughs> Wait for me, Samantha. <laughs> to wait at. <laughs> Mother, hmm? are you sure he's here? Quite sure. Oh, they have cookies and Jacques. Oh, they make it marvelously here. Mother, hmm? I don't believe it. I'm sure I will. <laughs> Where is he? I know this is upsetting for you, darling, but I'm not in the least surprised. But, Mother, why? I thought he was happy with me. That's the spirit of conquest. It's a disease of mortal men, like, uh, chicken pox. <laughs> Just a moment. That girl. I know how you feel, Samantha, but I do think we ought to leave before they see us. Lindor, Rabamanthus, Incepta. Oh, Samantha, <laughs> you're not going to to see me. <laughs> All right, come off it, Sarah. Dignity, Samantha, dignity. Well, hello, Samantha. My, it has been a long time, hasn't it? Sarah Baker, I should have known. She's one of us, Mother, although I hate to admit it. Just what do you think you're doing with my husband? Your husband? Well, now, I heard you've done something foolish, but I never thought for one moment. You haven't answered my question. Well, that must be obvious. I'm Miss Jasmine. Well, now, I must say I've had enormous respect for Darren's taste up until now. Now, just a moment, Blythe Spirit. Watch your tone, my gal. You're speaking to my daughter. Oh, really? Well, now, look who's suddenly so concerned. What does that mean? Pay no attention to her, Samantha. You seem suddenly terribly solicitous for someone who is so anxious for me to test your mate's mettle. Mother! There's one thing I cannot abide. It's a stool pigeon. Just what did you think you were going to prove by sicking this broom rider on Darren? <laughs> Easy, Samantha. Be careful what you say. Well, you haven't proved a thing. 
Even Sir Galahad wouldn't be safe with her. <laughs> That's better. Now that this little masquerade is over, I trust it won't be necessary to ask you again. Stay away from Darren, Sarah. Is that clear? Well, she certainly is sensitive, isn't she? Pity, I was just starting to enjoy myself. I appreciate your efforts on my behalf, Sarah Baker, but from now on, you'll do as my daughter asked. You know how difficult it is for me to leave something unfinished, Endora? Force yourself. All this <laughs> <laughs> man and Tater behind you 100% to make you the best Miss Jasmine there ever was. I want you to believe that. Oh, I do believe you, Darren, and I won't think about leaving again. You wouldn't want me to start something I couldn't finish, would you? Of course not. I want... Where'd all the time go? We haven't even had our lunch. We'd better get back. We'll talk about this some other time. Oh, yes, indeed. Some other time. Waiter? Hello? Oh, hello, darling. How are you? You're not? Yes, dear. Business. Miss Jasmine. Well, I understand. No, I'm fine. Yes, sweetheart. See you later. She won't give up, eh? That home-wrecking harpy. Professional pride, I suppose. Well, she's not going to get away with it. I'm going to tell Darren that she's a witch. I wouldn't try to convince him he's susceptible to witches, Samantha. I never used one single spell on Darren. You may have a difficult time convincing him of that. Mother, what am I going to do? You have no choice. I guess not. I suppose every woman has to face this at one time or another. Darren will just have to be on his own with no help from anyone. Yes, but darling... And so will I. <laughs> All finished? Almost. Oh, how are things coming with Miss Jasmine? Hmm? Okay, Larry, I think we're getting some good layouts. Fine. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, uh, where are you going? Home. Uh, do you have to? Yes. <laughs> Louise is waiting for you, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Well, is it urgent that you go home right at this minute? Not if you have somewhere else for me to go. <laughs> I do have. Where? Janine Fleur's apartment. Really? With me. Oh. Why? I've got some business to take care of with Janine, and I'd rather not do it alone. I brought Larry along to approve some of these changes you asked me to come over and make. Yes, of course. Uh, may I fix you both a drink? Yes, no, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Just a little one. Oh, well, fine. Larry, uh, these television spots need a little... Larry? Hmm? Oh, 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 yes, they, they certainly do need a little. Yes. I was going to say fixing. No, I'm not arguing. There you are. Well, here's to your very good health, Miss Fleur. Of course. Thank you. Are they all right? Mine's wonderful. I think I'll lay down and take a nap. <laughs> yeah. Meantime, I'll take care of Janine. Isn't it getting crowded in here? Sarah, I'm going to lay it right on the line with you. I love my husband, and I also have a great deal of faith in him. Oh, is that why you're here? Looking after him? He can take care of himself. As long as you don't pull anything fancy. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, of course not. <laughs> he was suddenly bitten by a tsetse fly. <laughs> oh. Samoan lotus leaf. <laughs> now, at least let him act of his own free will. I thought you had more pride than that. Believe me, Samantha, I have no need of help. Well, if I'm going to lose Darren to something like you, it's probably better that I find it out now. Remember what I said? his own free will. Involve the papers right away. Is that all right with you, Larry? 
Oh, sure. <laughs> Why don't we sit over here? The light's a bit better. Oh, fine. Uh, come on over, Larry. All right. <laughs> yes, here we are. Now, in this first setup, why don't you go on home, Larry? I'd be glad to. Two's company and three's a crowd. <laughs> I think. Well, what for? I don't know. But I don't think it was my idea. Oh, wait for me, will you? Sure. I think I need another drink. <laughs> there. Now, I think the dialogue that probably gives you the most trouble is right here on page three. Oh, you're absolutely right. All right, it seems to me if you said, um, Jasmine introduces a new sensation rather than a new essence that might make it easier. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say so, Larry? Larry? <laughs> Strangest thing I've ever seen. He keeps going to kiss you. What did you say? I said I want to kiss you more than anything else in the world. Go ahead. <laughs> Funny, Samantha. Well, I warned you. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'd just soon keep my husband alive. Get out of here, or I'll. You'll what? <laughs> you know what I'm capable of doing. I'd say we were pretty evenly matched. Sort of reduces us to the human level, doesn't it? How would you like a poke in the nose? I'm not a brawler. I didn't think so. Pardon the intrusion. <laughs> what did you do that for? I'm sorry, Darren. It slipped. Well, never mind. I probably had it coming. <laughs> what happened to you? Nothing. Where were you? Well, I think I took another nap. <laughs> I feel great. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, Janine. But, Darren, we have things to talk about. Well, I don't mind breaking lunch and dinner dates with my wife or something important, but uh, there's nothing here that can't be fixed down at the office. Are you coming, Larry? No, you run along. You're absolutely right. Samantha must be concerned about you. <laughs> you yourself. All right. Well, uh, now, Miss Fleur, suppose we talk about your problems. <laughs> now what? I realize that this is none of my business, Sarah, but Louise Tate happens to be a very dear friend. Some other time, my wife is waiting for me, too. <laughs> oh, yes, if you can't stay, I understand. Then I wish you'd explain it to me. <laughs> Come in. Hello, darling. Hi, sweetheart. This time I didn't take any chances. I didn't phone, I just came right down. Well, I've got it written right there on my calendar in big red letters. Lunch, my wife, urgent. Good. <laughs> Oh, is that Miss Jasmine? <laughs> yeah, that's her. Let's go, dear.
Enough is enough. It's about time I paid some attention to you. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm practicing my button sewing. Getting pretty good, too. See? Well, it's marvelous. <laughs> but the workaday world is over Friday night. Time for excitement and romance. Oh, marvelous. Where are we going? Going? We're not going anywhere. Excitement and romance, you said. That sort of goes with black tie, champagne, and dancing, doesn't it? We don't have to get that excited. Oh, I see. <laughs> no champagne or dancing. You can wear my black tie if you like. Oh, thank you, darling. I love you with all my heart, but nothing in this world is going to get me to put my shoes back on, let alone a black tie. Hmm. Oh, I just thought we'd sit around here together. Just the two of us, you know. Oh, grab that, will you, honey? Oh, sure. Hello? Yes, it is. Yes, he is. Just a minute, please. Darren, it's for you. Thank you, honey. Hello. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Well, you are an eager beaver, aren't you? Uh, tonight it'd be fine. Well, I'm looking forward to meeting you, too. Uh, yes, goodbye. Who is that? An admirer. An admirer of what? Of me. I'm to be interviewed as the prototype of the successful young advertising executive. Oh, really, Darren? For newspapers and magazines, television, something like that? It's something like that. Which one? A paper. Which one? A local paper. Which one? A local school paper. Oh. Which one? A local junior college paper by a local junior college journalism student. Well, I think that's very nice. <laughs> well, it's a start anyway. No telling where I'll go from there. Oh, well, I'm very proud of you. Was that his mother who called? No, that was her. Her? Sorry, she. Oh, well, how did her, um, she pick on you? She saw my picture in the neighborhood paper when we moved in. Oh, yes, that was a wonderful picture. You looked sort of fearless and sexy, as I recall. Somehow that photographer caught me, didn't he? <laughs> where are you going? Put a tie on. Doesn't look nice like this. Oh, I see. Oh, and Sam, will you fix some cold drinks, sandwiches, things like that? Why did you just give me a quarter and I'll go to the movies? <laughs> I can't tell you how much I appreciate your letting me come over tonight. You're the most important term project I've got. Well, I'm flattered. It's really fascinating how much you look like your picture. Oh, yes. Uh, somehow that photographer caught... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, can we offer you something? Please don't go to any bother. Oh, it's no bother. Hmm? It's no bother. I have sandwiches already. You're very sweet. And I'll try not to keep your husband for too long. Oh, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, I think creative advertising is among the more fascinating avocations in the world today. Yes, I suppose it is. And I never expected that anyone who was so successful in that field would be, well, as young as you, Mr. Stevens. Well, I'm not that young, Miss Randall, although uh, most men in my position are a bit older, I guess. Baloney. Mm? <laughs> and there's some corned beef and liverwurst and some of that wonderful smelly cheese, too. My husband's simply crazy about that. No, thank you. But I would like a little something to cool me off. <laughs> yes, of course. One thing I'm dying to know is where you got that idea for that wonderful Caldwell Soup campaign. The only thing that will ever come between us. It's an inspired slogan. Well, how did you know that was mine? I've made quite a study of you, Mr. Stevens. Well, I am flattered, Miss Randall. Please call me Liza. Oh, very well, Liza. And I'll call you Darren. Or that is, if Mrs. Stevens doesn't mind. Oh, no, of course not. He's been called worse than that. My wife has a great sense of humor. We practically never stop laughing around here. <laughs> I suppose you find it difficult to accomplish anything at home. What do you mean by that? Oh, she means business, dear. Oh, well, I guess we better just stop laughing so you can get down to some serious work. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? Actually, I do find the office more conducive, yes. I thought so. And as long as we have a date to go down there tomorrow, I won't have to keep you any longer tonight. Tomorrow? 
Well, when uh, Liza, uh, Miss Randall called me the other day about the interview, I suggested that she come down to the office on Saturday when it's quiet so I can show her around. You see? Oh, yes, I see. Liza's never seen a real advertising agency. Oh, well, I suppose everyone should see one sooner or later. <laughs> Is 9 o'clock all right? That'll be fine. In the morning? Well, of course in the morning. Nice to have met you, Mrs. Stevens. Oh, wonderful to have met you, Liza. Wonderful to have met you. Oh, wonderful to have... Uh, nice meeting you, Liza. <laughs> See you in the morning, Darren. Yes, good night, Liza. Nice little girl, isn't she? Rather big for a little girl. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you certainly seem to bring out the woman in her. Oh, come on. All young girls are impressed by an older man. Well, you certainly are that. <laughs> Especially an older man who doesn't look his age. Vanity, thy name is human. <laughs> What's wrong with being human? At least I'm not a... Not a what? Now, Sam. <laughs> Sam, now cut that out. You're not jealous of a school kid, are you? Not a what? A teenage, freckle-faced school kid in short socks and sneakers. <laughs> when I have something like you... Like what? A fascinating, a witching, a guiling... You convinced me. <laughs> I think it's a shame you have to go to the office today. I won't be long. Why don't you come with us? No, thank you. I've got a lot of housework to do. It's almost 9.15. Where is our little... Sam. Typical American school kid with freckles, short socks, and sneakers. That is a very accurate description of Liza Randall. It's also a very accurate description of Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> oh, now you finish your breakfast. I'll get it. Good morning. Good morning. Is dear, is Mr. Stevens ready? Just about. Why don't you come in, Liza, and make yourself comfortable? It'll only be a minute. I'll tell Mr. Steve, uh, Darren that you're here. Who is it? Typical American school kid with freckles, silk stockings, and three-inch French heels. Why? Well, it ain't Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> Honey, why didn't you ask her to come in? Come on in, Liza. Good morning, Darren. <laughs> well, good morning. Uh, oh, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Don't let me rush you. I'm ready any time you are. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, would you care for some coffee? No, thank you. I'll be right with you as soon as I finish my legs. <laughs> I'm waiting. After all, your wife's been nice enough to lend you to me for a whole day. Yes, of course. Uh, why don't you two get started? I, you want to get home before dark. Are you uh, sure you won't come with us? Oh, no. I've got loads to do around here. You two go ahead and have fun. All right. Let's go, Liza. I'll give you my undivided attention, Mrs. Stevens, so we won't waste a moment. Well, see you later, honey. We won't be late. Yes, we'll be very careful. Hmm? Driving? <laughs> See you later, Mrs. Stevens. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Liza. <laughs> My name is Marvin Grogan. They call me Monster. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. Mrs. Stevens, I believe that was your husband who just left here in a car. That's right. 
Well, a woman named Liza Randall was seated next to him. I know that, too. Very, very next to him. Now that you mention it, it did catch my eye. Well, Mr. Stevens, I don't know how disturbed you are, but it might interest you to know that I'm very disturbed. Well, I don't think there's really anything to be disturbed about. You'll pardon me if I disagree with you? One, Liza Randall is engaged to me. Two, we have a standing date every Saturday morning, which she broke to go shopping with her mother, which we both know she didn't do any such thing. Three, she's made it very plain that she's out to get your husband. Well, I really don't think it's that serious. Four, this is not the first time a situation like this has come up. You see, Liza has what you call a mother complex, only with fathers. <laughs> Five, what Liza Randall wants, Liza Randall gets, unless... Uh, unless what? Unless you can come up with a better suggestion. I have decided to break your husband in half. <laughs> uh, why don't you come inside, Monster? I think you're right. There's definitely something to be disturbed about. <laughs> Once the preliminary sketches are made, can we get together with our copywriters and artists, see if we can improve upon them? Then, of course, we have uh, a photographic layout. Do many women pose for you? Well, for the photographers, actually. Your wife is very jealous, isn't she? Well, no more or less than any woman. Have you known many women? Liza, did you come down here to study uh, advertising techniques or to ask me a lot of personal questions that are none of your business? You're a very sensitive man. Well, you could say that, yes. Sensitive men are exciting. They're so, so... Sensitive. Yes. Yes. Now, why don't we get into some examples of uh, overall composition? All right. Uh, would you like another stack of pancakes, Monster? No, thank you, Mr. Stevens. Eight or nine stacks are about all I can go. I ate all your sausage and bacon, too. <laughs> I got a lot of hostility, I guess. Well, I'd rather you attack my icebox than my husband any time. You feeling better? Pretty good. Except that when I get emotional, I burn up an awful lot of sugar. I get a sweet tooth. You got any pie? Uh, yes, I think so. What kind of pie do you prefer? I'm very fond of apple. Well, it seems I recall a fresh baked apple pie. <laughs> but I'm crazy about banana cream. Oh. Well, aren't you lucky? It isn't apple at all. But banana cream is pretty rich. So I try to stick with apple when I'm in training. <laughs> Which I'm not at the moment. <laughs> Half apple and half banana cream. Steven's specialty, monster. Enjoy yourself and let your conscience be your guide. <laughs> mm. Now, as you can see by this analysis curve, the public's taste changes with the times. It isn't enough for an advertising man to have imagination. He has to have a sympathetic eye and ear to what the public wants and what they need. <laughs> The product's success depends upon its public acceptance, and that acceptance will depend upon an image created for that product by an advertising executive. Take clothing styles, for instance. Oh, a different designer dominates the field each year. Cheers. <laughs> then the public chooses one above all the others. Now, of course, what we have... <laughs> Root beer? Root beer and what? Scotch. Scotch? W what's that? Gin. Gin? Give me that. Oh, oh heavens. <laughs> There's a towel over there. Will you get it for me, please? Right, yes. You ought to be spanked. What's the matter with you, anyway? Nothing's the matter with me, and I wish you wouldn't talk to me as if I were 12 years old. You're absolutely right. I do apologize. A 12-year-old child would have more sense than to pull a foolish stunt like that. 
You do that. That's all right. I don't mind. I would like to be your father for just about five minutes. Oh, just five I minutes. I wouldn't care for that at all. I like being who I am, and I like you the way you are. <laughs> Never mind that. Just put some water on the towel and soak the gin out of your dress. You know how zealously we got our corporate image, Tate? The keynote of all our advertising is dignity. Oh, by all means, dignity. And let me assure you, Mr. Austin, your campaign is going to be designed by one of our most talented and dignified account executives. Well, that's good to hear. I'm glad we spotted his car downstairs, you know. He often comes into the office on Saturdays. He's an extremely dedicated young man. I'm glad you need him. Be happy to. Now, listen to me, young lady. There's been enough of this nonsense. Well, we haven't done a thing. We have done all we're going to. Oh, no! <laughs> I think we are intruding. Oh, uh, I don't think so. Uh, Mr. Johnson, have you seen Baron Stevens this morning? Uh, no, I haven't. But uh, when I do, I'll certainly tell him you were looking for him. Uh, thank you. Uh, nice to see you again, Mrs. Johnson. <laughs> All right, let's go. Isn't that cute? He married us. You have all the material you need for a truly fascinating thesis. We are leaving by way of the freight elevator. Who's going to break the news to your wife? The moon. <laughs> so you see, Monster, it's easy to understand why an impressionable girl like Liza would be momentarily smitten by a man like my husband. Maturity has its own fascination. I guess so. If I were you, I'd just forget all about it. Oh, I haven't thought about Liza for almost a half an hour. That's a record for me. That's wonderful. Listening to you explain it, it suddenly comes to me what a child she is, immature and like that. Well, she's still very young, Monster. Yes, she is, and I realize that now. And like you say, maturity sure is fascinating. You're beginning to look hungry again. I think I ought to fix you something to eat. <laughs> Mrs. Stevens, I'm not going to lie to you. I am getting hungry again. But I just want you to know that this has been the most fascinating morning in my whole life. Well, I'll tell you the truth, Monster. It's been a pretty fascinating morning for me, too. I certainly hope you mean that. Monster! Oh, please control yourself. Please don't do anything rash. <laughs> What's all that smell all over you, Jen? Monster, this is my husband. Darren, this is Marvin Grogan. They call him Monster. <laughs> Jen? That's right. That scotch, if I ever smelled anything. The scotch is on me, the gin is on Liza. How do you do, monster? Well, what are you doing with scotch all over you and gin all over Liza? We just started to have a simple drink. A drink? No one had a drink, simple or otherwise. We merely spilled it on ourselves. <gasps> there, you see, perfectly innocent. Okay. I burned up a lot of sugar on account of you. I came over here to bruise you up a little bit, Mr. Stevens. You have no right to spy on me, Mr. Grogan. This is a free country, and I'm a citizen. Perfectly free, as far as I'm concerned. May I have my hand back? <laughs> OK. Pleased to meet you. I have since learned that there's absolutely no maturity and fascination between us, thanks to Samantha here. Samantha? Pay no attention to him, Darren. What does he mean, Samantha? Don't let this big clod bother you, Darren. Now, listen to me, both of you. I think it's about time that both of you went about your own business. But, Darren, my thesis... If you have any more questions, just submit them to me in writing. But, but Darren... No buts. Goodbye and good luck. Thank you. Goodbye, Samantha. <laughs> well, that's quite a conquest you've made there. Well, he's really quite a nice young man. Oh, I suppose under all that sinew and tendon beats a heart of pure protein. Oh, Darren. Oh, Darren, what? Well, I mean, you're... Oh, Darren, you're not. I mean... Well, I mean what I mean. You say what you've got to say. You're jealous. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Me jealous of a... a... Typical American school kid with freckled short socks and sneakers. <laughs> well, I... Uh... I suppose you're pretty proud of yourself, aren't you? She's a very charming person. Something about which you don't have the faintest idea how to be. Well, what's so unusual about having charm? It comes with age, like wrinkles. You're jealous. Me, jealous? You've got to be kidding. Sure, Liza Randall, the most irresistible thing to come along since Bridget Bardot. You're jealous. <laughs> don't you laugh at me, you monster, so help me. I want you to know I'm really very flattered by this whole thing. You should be. Liza happens to be an extremely pretty girl. 
I was talking about Monster. We had quite a morning. He was here all morning? Oh, yes. He arrived just after you left. He wanted to break you in half. Only my charm and three square meals kept you in one piece. I want you to know I put up quite a valiant fight myself today. Oh, really? It was touch and go there for a moment. Touch what and go where? Are you trying to tell me that it wasn't you who lured him down to his office, it was him that lured you? Mm -hmm, monster, it was his idea, I swear. Liza, if you're lying... If my term project wasn't so important, I'd have gone shopping with my mother. That does it. Oh, Monster! I don't mind telling you, that child got a bit aggressive down there at the office. Child? That's as fully developed a woman as I've seen in many a day. You said yourself she was a typical American it school kid. It just doesn't kid. matter what I said. You must have given her some encouragement. I did nothing of the kind. I was explaining to her the rise and fall of a public acceptance survey chart. She tried to get me drunk. Do you really expect me to believe that? Of course I do, as much as you expect me to believe you were protecting me from Marvin Musclebound all morning. Well, I was. Oh, don't be ridiculous. That big clod wouldn't hurt a flea. What did you say? I said he wouldn't hurt a flea. You said I was ridiculous. Who said you were ridiculous? Me? Yes, that's what you said. Let's not fight about it. Well, that's exactly what you're doing. I'm not fighting. This is no fight. You're fighting. It takes two to make a fight. You started it, that's one, and you started it with me, that's two. Don't be ridiculous. All I said was that big clod wouldn't hurt a flea. Now, Monster, please don't lose your temper. Well, I'm not going to lose my temper. I'm merely going to teach him that when a man has a wonderful wife like Samantha, he shouldn't go after a girl like Liza, who's got a boyfriend like me. Now, listen to me. Now, Darren, don't fight with it. I've had enough of this silly farce. Now, what is it you intend to do? I intend to close your jaw. You and who else? Darren, no. Oh, have you had enough? Why don't you try one there? Oh, oh my hand! Oh, have you seen Monster? Uh -huh. You've ruined his hands. He may never make another pass. Oh, I don't think that'll stop him. I think she means football, dear. Oh, you, you, you monster. Let's get out of here, Liza. I gotta go soak my hands. Come on, Marvin. Hey, that's the first time you've ever called me Marvin. <laughs> Why did you let that little girl hit me? Well, sweetheart, all things considered, it was the least I could do. <laughs> You're still angry, aren't you? Well, why would you say that? <laughs> all right. You're surrounded. Throw down your magic and come out with your hands up. 